This is part two of a video series <coughs> dedicated to the creation of uh, moving average, moving range control charts. In part one of the video series, which uh, previously published on YouTube, I showed how you can take a pivot table style data file and reshape it uh, into a four column data file that's importable in a Tableau to use for the control chart. So the work that I did here was a preliminary setup for what I'm going to show today in part two. So if you're interested in seeing how the data was created and reshaped, <coughs> you can go to YouTube and search for reshaping crosstab data and you'll fi you'll find this video. The um, In the current video we're going to be looking back in the Tableau and I have loaded the data file that I prepared in part one which has a uh, date, store ID, which is uh, actually a service station and uh, an annual comp calculated on a daily basis for each of those stations. So what we're creating is a two-part charting here where on the lower part is a moving seven-day moving range and the upper part is a seven-day moving average of the daily sales comps. This, um, the calculations in these charts I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover in this video and <coughs> the output from this the way I created is you can see that <coughs> I've taken the store ID and put it on a pages shelf and when I create this uh, the pages shelf will animate through the various stations the control charts for these stations now there happens to be 557 of these so this is a fairly big file it's actually not a, not a very big file it's only a quarter million lines of data but uh, there's information from 557 stations that spans uh, about a little less than a year and a, about a year and a quarter. So the control charts um, actually produce these. Uh, what I do is I export them to PDF and by animating through the page shelf, one of the tricks is when you're in Tableau and you do a page setup, if you click show all pages on the page shelf then it tells you you're going to create 557 pages so the output is created uh, one with with the print to PDF and I'll show you what that output file looks like here it is you can see there's 557 pages and you can quickly scan down through all the control charts to see <coughs> what uh, is going on at any particular station so getting back to uh, into Tableau how does this all work well, first of all, the data comes in with an annual comp calculated for each station. So we begin the process um, in control charting. Th th there's no, in this particular instance, I've done no iterations in terms of removing outliers. Um, sometimes <coughs> you do a, an iterative process of removing these outliers to try to get things in control and you study what's going on with these points in time to figure out why are the the range is higher than the upper control limit but in this case I'm not going to talk about that I'm just going to talk about the basic setup so we have a series of calculated fields in this case and so as far as the moving range itself goes <coughs> the first reference line I give here is average and in Tableau, the way you add reference lines, you, you select the, the axis and then say edit reference line. And what I'm going to do is just show you what these look like. So um, we're going to actually edit this reference line. And so all, what I've done is just said take the, the moving range of the seven day average field and take the average of it. And I've created a custom label that just says the computation which is average equals the value which is the in the value field here this is a calculated field that I'll show you here in a second so that's how that particular um, average line is shown I have two other reference lines shown here one is the upper control limit and one's a lower control limit and I'm going to show you how those are calculated in the in the uh, data fields in the calculated fields. So to start off with, let's uh, begin with first of all the seven day moving average which happens to be up here. A seven day moving average, let's look at how that's actually calculated. What it's doing is, <coughs> remember I said each station has a daily value 
moving along through time. So the seven day moving average is the window average of the sum of the annual comps comma minus six comma zero. What that means is take across this window of seven days, this is going back six days from where you are now, and the zero is where you are now, calculate the average of those annual comps. And that's what's going on here is a seven day moving average is being calculated. This smooths out the data compared to a daily um, a daily comp. And so that's the first calculation is the seven day moving average. The next calculation is the moving range of the seven day moving average. So let's take a look at that one. <coughs> In that field we have uh, basically we're looking for the range in other words what is the maximum and minimum difference um, the difference between the max and the min in the seven day moving average and so what we're doing is taking a window max of the seven day moving average again within a week a week's window minus the minimum within a week's window and so that gives us the range and we're taking uh, this is automatically an absolute value <clears throat> because you're taking a max minus a min. So you don't have to formulate it with an absolute value. And that's what's plotted down here <clears throat> in this field. You can see uh, the, the upper charts being driven by a seven day moving average here. The lower charts, the moving range of the seven day moving average. Now we have control limits on each. So let's take a look at the control limits down here for the moving range chart. So I have a moving range lower control limit, a moving range upper control limit. So the upper control limit is simply shown here as 1.92 times the, the, the average of the seven day moving average. And this 1.92, the subgroup size here is seven. So this is a uh, constant for subgroup size seven. And then the lower control limit for that is 0 0.08 times the same same number the average of the moving range of the seven day moving average so <clears throat> those are the two uh, control limits and the way that you get the, those control limits on these charts is that you basically you highlight this chart you take this and you set it on the detail shelf which is shown right here so I don't have to do that because I've already done it so I've got the moving upper control limit and lower control limit of the moving range shown on this chart and then I just add them as reference lines and so if I show you really quick what that looks like if we edit this reference line what I've done is I've picked bec because we've put these on the detail shelf they're available to us so here's the upper control limit for the moving range chart and I've picked that um, as my value and I'm taking an average of it and I've done a, again a custom label where I say the upper control limit equals the value so that's all it is and then I just format the line with the dash red line same thing applies up here um, in the moving uh, the seven day moving average chart up but I'm going to show you the calculations on those control limits um, and unfortunately I should have shut off auto auto updating but um, now we'll move over to the upper to the upper chart, the seven day moving average. So the moving average upper control limit is shown here, and let's take a look at that calculation. And so this is a little bit uh, a little bit more involved because it involves taking the average, which is this line here, of the seven day moving average. You start there and you add to it 0 0.42 times the average of the moving range which is down here so we're taking 0 0.42 times this number and adding it to this average the lower control limit is the same except this this is a negative here now this 0 0.42 is again based on subgroup size of seven because of the seven day moving average window so once you have the chart set up and you have put the store ID on the page shelf then and you set up the uh, the page setup that you want uh, for print scaling I say tell it to fit no more than one page across one page down landscape and the layout I put the I put these uh, color charts 
down uh, here and then you have to click the show all pages and then you can create them with PDF now this particular in this particular instance uh, the PDF file that I showed you is 196 megabytes it took 70 minutes an hour and 10 minutes to create this PDF file and part of that is because I've done special coloring here to color the uh, the points that are out of control either above the upper control limit or below the lower control limit so you can see that I've put coloring on each of these charts and I have separate coloring for the um, for the moving average ch moving average chart and moving range chart and I want to show you how that's done so I've created additional fields here called moving average control and moving range control this is really the color control that I'm talking about so I'm going to edit those to show you what they do so it's a simple if then else block I just say that if the seven day moving average is greater than the upper control limit then I'm out of control high else if the average is less than the lower control limit then I'm out of control low else I'm in control so then I take this field and drop it on the color palette and then I set the colors to what I want um, in each of these cases. This upper chart is set with uh, palette which is for colored blindness and the lower palette is just set with uh, Tableau palette color 10. And I, I do that to distinguish so that you, even though they're similar you can tell the difference between which color palette's going with the moving average and which color palette's going with the moving range. So that's sort of how that's done. But by adding these colors, uh, it basically almost doubles the size of the PDF file. When I created it without the colors, it took um, less time to create. and was about 115 megabytes. So adding the color, color to the chart uh, does blow up the time and the size in creating control charts. But that's pretty much it. That, that's how you set up um, for control charting and um, there's some other advanced features I'm going to add to this and put it into a later video but for now that's it thanks for listening